الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله وآله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم رحمة الله وبركاته فاسي ولا تفنك الله سبحانه وتعالى for giving us the opportunity for being here today. Secondly, we'd like to bring peace and blessings to our noble messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. I'm your presenter Abu Bakr Islam, and today on the two parts brought to you by Rose Hattie Islam, the topic of the show is the power of words. Now, Ubaid ibn Qab mentioned that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, there is wisdom in poetry. Today, inshallah ta'ala, we have two special guests. One of our guests is known for his, for his voice He's known to be the voice of his generation, award-winning writer and performer. In 2007, he won a CBC Poetry Face-Off Best New Artist Award. He's known for his unique spoken word. Our next guest is also known before Islam for to be a self-taught um, guitarist, beatboxer, professional dancer. He's also a part of the um, Dawah Project, Rosati Islam. Without further ado, inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to introduce you to our first guest, Faisal Salih. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I'm going to introduce you to our next guest, Buna Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All right, inshallah ta'ala. The first question I wanted to ask you, brothers, is are you born Muslim? Starting with Buna Muhammad. Yes, alhamdulillah. Um, I'm a born Muslim. My family is from uh, the Oromo region of Ethiopia. And a lot of people are not really familiar, but you know, in Ethiopia, I would say it's roughly 50% Muslim. And my father is actually from a town called Harar. Harar, which is considered the fourth most Islamic capital in the world actually it goes Mecca Medina Jerusalem and Harar yeah in this small town uh, there's over 100 masajid and a lot of people forget I mean Ethiopia Abyssinia this was the first place of Hijra or the families of the Prophet Sallallahu the first place he sent his family to was Abyssinia which is today modern-day Ethiopia Eritrea so there's a long history of Muslims in that region so Yes, I'm from a Muslim family and from that specific region. Uh, how about you, Faisal? Me, alhamdulillah. I'm, I was born Muslim. I'm half Somali and half Yemeni. MashaAllah. So, okay, have you always been practicing the deen? Well, like a lot of young people, uh, especially living in the western parts of the world, you know, there was a point in my life when I was really kind of caught up in chasing what I perceived to be, you know, fun, right? And I, I would say that, no, I wasn't always practicing. And there was a large portion of my life where I was... Um, you know, caught up in jahiliya and caught up in, you know, chasing girls and, and all the foolish things that you do in that age. And alhamdulillah, I was able to get out of it. Um, but, you know, I would say it wasn't until the later portion of my life. SubhanAllah. How about you, Faisal? Alhamdulillah, same thing applies to me, really. It's just where the society we're in has such a huge influence upon us that we tend to blend into it. And that's the same thing that kind of occurred to me, very similar to Buna. It wasn't up until six, seven months ago that I started to realize what was the haq and what I had to do. So Bruno, what, you said before you wasn't practicing the deen. What is it about the deen what attracted you to come back to start practicing again? Well, I think when you really put life in perspective and you start seeing, you know, like a lot of my homies that I grew up with, you know, subhanAllah, some of them passed away, some of them are locked up in jail, some of them are just doing the same thing they've been doing for the past four or five years. And you start seeing how pointless their lives are. Like subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us and gave us a purpose. And humans are the ones who, you know, deceive ourselves and shaitan deceives us into believing that, you know, we're somehow greater than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us for. And it wasn't until I really began to humble myself, you know, and start realizing that I'm really in charge of nothing. You know, I wake up every day and it's by the mercy of Allah that I'm able to come back home. I'm able to wake up from my sleep. I'm able to, you know, have food and, and drink on my table. And it's not a matter of, you know, some people they come into Islam, you know, fully by fearing and, and thinking, oh, I'm going to go to hell. And that I really came into it by thinking, you know, how grateful I should be oh, and how, how, you know, how amazing my life is. And, and starting to see change in my life, starting to see, you know, how good things have gotten for me. I started to think I have to give praise and I have to give thanks. And alhamdulillah, rabbil alamin. We give all praise and thanks to the Lord of all the, the universe. Oh, how about you, Faisal? Actually, pretty much very similar to Buna once again is the fact that we're so ignorant nowadays and that same thing applied to me where I would neglect all the signs that were around me but there came a point in my life where there's so many signs you just can't neglect it anymore so I slowly became more aware more aware more aware and it came up to this point where I just wasn't happy mm. it's, it's one of these things and verily in the remembrance of Allah the hearts find rest and with that with that peace that I felt I knew there was no other way but to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it so I thought how can I try and do my own thing, how can I try to repay Allah, I, even though it's one of the most impossible things, because everything that we have is a blessing from our heartbeat to even our fingerprints to everything around us, to the family we have, like he says, to the food we eat, 
And subhanAllah, it's just about repaying Allah, trying to anyway, praying five times a day, inshaAllah ta'ala. And that's what it started off with. And with Salah, you start to realize more things once you start praying. You can't, you can't be in weird scenarios and you can't just leave to go to pray. It's, it's very strange. Sometimes you're caught up with the wrong people and if you're out partying and it's time for a share, you have to make a difference. Which one are you going to do? So it's all over slow, slow, slow process. But alhamdulillah, I started to realize. All right, Bruno, you're, you're known for your poetry and Faisal's also known for his singing. Before you started to get into the poetry scene, Bruno, were you ever known for anything else? Were you ever involved in any music or? Yeah, I mean, like a lot of people don't really know, but you know, I used to be a rapper, and uh, <laughs> I used to, you know, I used to get it in. Like, I mean, the difference between a lot of brothers is, I'll be honest, I was good. You know, like <laughs> I had a career, like I was going places. You know, I had a manager, I had a group, I had a like a band backing me and stuff like that, and I was working with some pretty big people in the industry. I had interned at Sony BMG record label and I was doing, you know, a lot of kind of understanding of the industry and I was getting into parties and people were hearing my name and I was connecting with a lot of good people. And I was really, you know, setting myself up to be the next whoever, right? Like I was really kind of putting myself in a good position. And I had a similar incident and, and you know, where I just felt like I couldn't be in this circumstance where I couldn't, you know, practice the basic fundamentals of our religion. If you can't pray in a place, you know, you really shouldn't be there. And I was really, you know, I was really kind of, I was producing music, I was following, you know, the, the, the trends of media <coughs> and popular culture, and it wasn't until, to be honest with you, I discovered spoken word poetry by accident, because I remember I was dropping a verse for a producer one time, and I was, you know, I was like, yo, listen to this verse, da, 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 and I did it, and I did it without music, and he was like, oh, that's tight, that kind of sounds like spoken word, and I was like, word, for real? <laughs> I, I didn't know what that was. And it wasn't until I, I did a bit more research and I heard another brother from Toronto who had been doing it that I said, you know what, this is something that I like. And you don't got to work with anybody, you know. You can be a dolo artist, like you don't have to work with a producer, you don't have to, you know, I don't even need a, a microphone, I could just yell and do it, it's, so, it's, it's all fun. good. So, it's yeah, I mean, that's what I was doing beforehand. I was more, I was always involved in creative writing and, and hip-hop mainly was my influence growing up. How about you, Faisal? Me, alhamdulillah, like, it's strange because me, very similar to him, music was always around me. There's videos of me singing at the age of six. Literally, since I could speak, I was singing. And like, I was trying to utilize the different things to help me improve because I knew how difficult the music industry was. So I went about trying to teach myself how to play guitar. And subhanAllah, I learned it very quickly and I picked it up. And with that, my songwriting started to get better and I started to understand the power of words like this topic's about. And it was just, it was just crazy because it come up to this point where things would get so so difficult because I knew how difficult this music industry was and it's just difficult for me to make that conversion. SubhanAllah. Alright, Bruno, poetry. Mm. What's, what's the big deal about poetry? What's the motive <laughs> about poetry? Why would you leave the music industry to come to poetry? What's yeah, the motive behind it? It definitely wasn't the money, I'll tell you that much <laughs> because, you know, people might... I guess it's so strange because when I first started doing what I was doing, you know, A, there weren't a lot of Muslims doing it. My, my first po poetry experiences were through poetry slams. And I don't know oh. how much people are familiar with poetry slams, mm -hmm. but they're like, you know, figure skating competitions for poetry. So you have a group of, you know, you have an audience, then you have a group of judges. And then you would come up, do your poem, you'd have about three minutes to do it, and then they'd give you a score out of ten. And it's a competitive thing, and, you know, it gets a lot of people out. It's mainly held in bars and stuff like that. And that's what I came up doing. A lot of my work was, you know, very politically focused. I was talking about what it was like being a young African, you know, man growing up in the society I was growing up in. And I was getting a lot of, you know, compliments from mostly non-Muslims. I didn't really see, there were no Muslims performing, and there were no Muslims at the venues. And it wasn't, that was about four or five years ago. Okay, so I've been doing this thing for a while. And <coughs> I guess, you know, it wasn't until recently that I really saw Muslims taking a liking to it, which is ironic because within our deen there is a long history of, is, of poetry within Islam. You had certain Sahaba like Hassan ibn Thabit, عنه, who was you know, very popular for his renditions of poems that would you know, defend the Prophet ﷺ. Because during that time in the Jahiliya, you know, the Arabs, they were really kind of fond of their language skills. And for them, the, the Arabic language at that point was at its epitome. And so in order to, you know, when the Quran was revealed, many of the, the Arabs said, oh, this can't be poetry because it doesn't follow this rhythm and it's, you know, it doesn't sound, it sounds like poetry, but the message is different and it's too good to be poetry. And so there was this huge fascination with words. So poetry at that point, you know, really became a message and a tool to help convince the people because it was a form that they were used to. So me naturally, when I had this skill, I mean, this was for me a jahiliya skill, similar to Hassan ibn Thabit. This is something he did before Islam. And when Islam became a prominent you know, portion of his life, he began to use that skill for the betterment of the deen, which is something that I similarly did. 
I mean, I didn't really know about him at that point, but it was, you know, something that in retrospect I can reflect on, that I really tried my best to use this skill that I had, that I was, you know, just kind of good at, and something that I, it's a skill, an art form that I had practiced for a while. It's not something that you learn overnight. A lot, a lot of brothers nowadays, they, or sisters, they wake up, I want to be a poet, and da 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 and it's like, <laughs> you know, I, people don't know, I've been writing for the last five or six years. You know, there was a point where I wrote almost every single day, right, like perfecting the craft to the point where I felt comfortable enough on paper to express myself. And so, you know, I did that and started thinking, you know, wow, people are listening. Mm. And it's a, scary, it's a scary thought when you think, when nobody's listening is cool. You can say whatever you want, you know, and you could be completely politically incorrect. You could talk about mm. whatever you want and it's not going to matter mm. because nobody's going to tell you otherwise. Yeah. But when you have, you know, one, two people who start telling you, yeah, you know, I like that, what you said, and it influenced me, you start thinking, subhanAllah, I influenced you? <laughs> okay, really? It's deep. Sure, right? And the more and more that happens, the more you begin to almost self-censor your, your, yourself because you, you realize that you know, there is power in words. And the more you know, words you use, the more you have to realize that you have to be very careful about what you say. SubhanAllah. And you have to really be cautious about you know, what you're saying, who you're saying it to, and why you're saying it. And so it wasn't until you know, later on in my, in my writing career that I began to embody that and understand that ultimately if I'm going to do something and if I'm going to you know, write and if I'm going to try and perform and present, it should be for the sake mm -hmm. of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. Not to say I don't enjoy it, you know, because I'll I be honest, I, I like the stage. Like it's, it's an adrenaline rush. It's a, it's a fun thing that I enjoy doing. But ultimately there has to be a purpose behind it. Without a purpose, you're wasting your time. So what, what is the basic message behind your poetry? I, I feel like, you know, over time my, my poetry and my message has changed. As a person, you grow, you evolve, and thus anything you say and do will follow a similar pattern. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until, you know, I really overcame, you know, my own nafs and my own ego that I started wanting to discuss more about the deen. At first, I was really shy because most of my audience was non-Muslim, and I, I didn't really want to say, you know, certain things that might turn people off. And you realize you're actually writing for an audience. You're writing for people, not for yourself or Allah. You're really writing to please people. Because if you write something and, you know, this person tells you, oh, I didn't like that, you're probably going to rethink that, you know. Meanwhile, if you have the, the intention of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you follow the examples of the prophets. Look at Prophet Nuh alayhi salam. He called people for how many, oh, let's say 950 years he was calling people on this earth. And barely anybody was responding. But will we reflect on him to this day and be like he was unsuccessful? No, he was very successful. He was a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was perfect in that regard. So what he did was completely fine, right? And you shouldn't necessarily use the, you know, the sheer number of responses you get as an indication of how successful or good you are. So, I mean, after I got over that hurdle, I started feeling like, okay, I want to write about you know, work that is going to make, first of all, young Muslims feel proud. Not pride, but proud. To feel good about being a Muslim. Because mm. we all know post 9-11, you know, there was this serious propaganda against young Muslims and against Muslims in general. It's like, after 9-11, it was either you're with us or against us. You know, a lot of sisters took off the hijab, brothers started shaving. People didn't want to be affiliated with the deen. For other people, you know, like myself, I felt like, you know, everybody was talking so bad about Islam. I wanted to, in fact, learn more about Islam so I could defend it. So I could use that now knowledge I have to tell people no. Because I always knew my, my heart this was haq. I always knew this was truth. And I wanted to, you know, create an art form, a medium that would, you know, first of all, you know, be a voice for young people. And, and be an a voice of inspiration, let young people know, look, you don't have to be ashamed to be a Muslim. You know, we are not uh, uh, you know, a people of, of wrongdoing. We're a people of you know, the truth. I mean, we're people that are trying to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And secondly, I wanted to do something that would you know, influence the non-Muslims, or I like to call them the not yet Muslims. Mm -hmm. And people might question these tactics. They might say, oh, you know, how effective is it? Wallahi, before I left Toronto a couple days ago, a sister actually contacted me who had been following my work online and it's, she was a non-Muslim, Portuguese background, okay, European background and I, I heard her take her shahada on the phone you know, and she told me, look, your poetry was a big part in me coming to learn more about Islam and to me that is like, obviously I can't take credit for it, I can't say it was my, I'm the one who you know, led her to Islam Hidayah is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if Allah guides somebody that's for their own benefit, that's you know, from the blessings of Allah but to hear things like that, to hear, wow, you know, this art form can actually influence somebody to change their lives to that extent, subhanAllah, that's a great blessing. And that's, you know, that's mm. a lot of power of, of the words when you put it that way. Faisal, with you is a little bit different because mm. with Buna, it's, it's more clear poetry. Mm. You sing. So what is your intention behind the singing? What is like your message behind mm. what you sing? Right, my message, because it's most important is 
I always reflect things back to when I started practicing the struggles and what I had to kind of go through. It's like, for example, I went cold turkey because the second I heard music's haram, I didn't want to play with it. It's a bit risky there, so I said, I'm going to completely go off music. I heard some nasheeds are halal, some aren't, so I thought, okay, let me try and... I needed to listen to something, let, let me be honest with you. I wasn't, I wasn't at the stage where I could fully comprehend the Qur'an properly, I'm not going to deny it, I wasn't so at the stage... To, basically, you were trying to find a balance. Yeah, trying to find a balance where, at least, because as, uh, as one, I think it was one scholar who said, um, that your eyes and your ears are the gateway to your soul. So what you hear, what you see in here would enter your heart and therefore either lower or raise your iman. So, I'm th so I was thinking if I can't fully comprehend the Qur'an yet or I'm not, I don't, I don't fully understand it properly, I was thinking I need to listen to something at least that reminds me of my deen. So even at least if I have something in my ears, it could like help me fix up at least. It so, like motivate you. Mm, and it was strange that the stuff that I was going through, some of it was either just atrocious or some of it, or some of it I didn't really like myself. So I thought, the way I've always been raised is, if you don't agree with something and you dislike something, it makes no benefit to sit back and moan about it. The only way you can really do something is by changing it yourself. So I thought, let me get into this with the only with intention of just getting people away from music now because the genres of music right now, to be honest with you, it's like lyrical pornography because it's actually disgusting. It's the stuff that we listen to nowadays. I see sisters on the street, the stuff they listen to, I don't even want to speak about. So I'm trying to use this as a medium to just get them away from this industry that's polluting their minds because wallahi that is what it's doing, it's polluting their minds and try and get them to something that relates back to the deen and always, 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 I'm not saying what I do is perfect but it, when I'm doing this it's with the intention to basically put you on the path back to the Qur'an and the Sunnah which is the only way of life. Alright Buna, in regards to the poetry, what's your intention behind the poetry? Again, you know, Hopefully, because this is something that you know, I think most people struggle with. If you're out there and you're doing something and you're trying to call people to whatever, you may start off with a very clean intention. <coughs> I, it's easy for me to say, Ya It's easy for me to say, my intention is to please Allah. My intention is to, you know, which I hope is my intention. No. But then, you know, you get in a space like this mm. and you, there's cameras and there's lights and <laughs> you get on a stage and people are watching you and they want to hear yeah. it. And you start thinking, wow, man, you know. Man, and the shaitan starts whispering in your ear and you start thinking, man, I'm pretty dope. Like, I'm the, I'm the man, <laughs> you know? And it's sad because I see a lot of young brothers and sisters who, you know, want to do something good, whether it's poetry or not, you know, even if it's you want to be a da'i, you want to go and study knowledge, you want to, you know, learn whatever for the sake of Allah. Initially, your intention can get all messed up and confused down the line. So I would say my intention, inshallah, is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through, you know, the kalam, through the words, through the poetry, and, you know, following the, the, the companions like Hassan ibn Thabit to use this talent to, you know, because, I mean, our deen is not one of, you know, extremes. It's very, under, it's very in the middle and it understands the context we live in, right? There's a time and a place for everything. The Prophet ﷺ, you know, he wasn't a person who would preach to people every single second because he knew they would get bored, you know. There's a time and a place for certain things. Poetry is not haram, you know. Most scholars are under the opinion that, in, you know, in the setting that, you know, we're delivering poetry, in the setting that, you know, if you're, as long as your content is something which is clear, then it's not a problem. When you start doing it so much that it takes away from the, mm, you know, the ibadah, and you start doing it so much that you forget the remembrance of Allah, you forget the Qur'an, you forget, you know, the salah, then it becomes an issue for you. Right, so uh, my intention is to hopefully, you know, like I said, use that talent to call people to good, to call people to what is right and forbid the evil, and at the same time, you know, use it as a form of, you know, dhikr of Allah, use it as a form of remembrance of Allah, and, and, and getting people in a space where, you know, they traditionally might not feel as though they need to receive da'wah. And what the brother was mentioning is very true, you know, for a lot of people who go cold turkey, because I went cold turkey as well, like, you know, I started you know, I found out Islam, music was haram, and it's not that I didn't know, but when I really comprehended it, I tried to cut it off. Mm. But you need something in the middle. You know, it's very difficult to just turn off something and not look at it again. So I went through a very, you know, I went through a nasheed phase as well, where like, you know, I was really interested in nasheed, and I was listening to it, and it was, for me, it was like rehab. You know, it was mm. like, you're, you're, you're hooked on this drug for so long, music is a drug, you know. For, uh, there's a reason why, you know, you have trance, and, and that stuff is like, drives people crazy, right? And when you're hooked on that stuff for so long, when you weave off of it, it can be very difficult. So you, sometimes you find the halal alternative. Some people look at nasheeds and they say that's a halal alternative. Some people look at poetry and they'd be like, that's halal alternative. People email me all the time and be like, thank you for providing us with a halal alternative. <laughs> if you ask me, I, today I don't listen to poetry. I don't listen to nasheed. You ask me who's my favorite poet, I don't even know who's out there. I don't know who's doing what. 
I, people ask me, oh, how often do you write? I don't write that often. I write barely ever. You know, I have, I have a life. I have things outside of this, you know? <laughs> it's not like something that consumes me like every single second of my life. That's what I'm thinking of. In fact, far from it. It's just a thing that I do, and then people ask me to do it, and I do it, you know? But it's not something that is, is, a, is a huge portion of my life. It doesn't define me. In fact, the people around me, my friends, my close friends will laugh when they hear the comments yeah. people make. When they hear this, like, they're like, they're talking about you? You're that guy? And I'm like, I guess so. They don't, people don't really know me for that. Definitely. All right, mashallah, You're, you've been touring all around, all around the world. You've been doing so many events and whatnot. Let's keep it real now, Bruno. Hmm. What kind of trials and tribulations do you go through during this poetry? Big fitness, you know, and I was telling the brother here who's, you know, mashallah, tabarakallah, he's been, you know, starting and he's coming up and I was warning him and I'm warning anybody who's listening that this thing can be a big fitna for you. You know, one thing I mentioned in the beginning was the intention part, the niya. Your niya is and has to be, you know, constantly corrected and perfected. You need to always ask Allah to cleanse and purify your intentions. Because if you don't, it's a very, very quick road to Jahannam. You know, it doesn't, it's not hard to get caught off track. It's not hard at all. Very, very easy. You know, and, and unless you're, you know, constantly questioning yourself, constantly looking at, you know, everything around you saying, why am I doing this? Why am I performing here? You know, why am I not performing here? Why am I doing this? Why am I doing that? Unless you're always second guessing yourself, it's very easy to get caught off track. And I mean, some of the fitness that I face personally is, you know, just that, like people praising you is ridiculous, you know? Yeah. And instead of people saying, MashaAllah, this is what Allah has decreed, and this is something that is good from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they say, you know, wow, you, I want to be like you. A kid tells me you want to be like me, I believe you're a loser, but <laughs> you want to be like me? Be like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who is the best of examples. You want to be a loser like me? Go ahead, it's not hard, you know? There's people in this world much better than me. You know, don't stop here, you know? Realize that People like myself or anyone who's, you know, in this, you know, certain field, we're trying to call you to what is right, what is clear, and what is the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know. Don't stop at trying to be somebody like me. I mean, I, sometimes that stuff can get to your head too, you know, because it's flattering. I understand what they're trying to say. They're trying to say, look, I appreciate what you're doing. I would like to do something similar. Jazakallah khairan. But I really feel as though, you know, sometimes when you hear that enough, you can really start believing your own hype. Well, does it sometimes basically go to your head? And oh, all the time. <laughs> like, you, you, you leave the room with a head this big, you can't even fit out the door, you know what I'm saying? And you start thinking to yourself, and the shaitan will tell you, you know, yeah, you're really, you're, you're good, you know. You did that. I mean, this person was, was, was crying. I mean, that was you. You did that. Spoiler. This person took shahada. That was you, son. You did that. And Spoiler. you start thinking, yeah, I'm the man. And, you know, I can talk like this because it's something that, you know, Honestly, I'm struggling with, and it's a personal battle, and it's something that I'm willing to openly admit because I think a lot of brothers have to recognize that it's not easy. And, you know, if you look at all the prophets over time, they, there was no one tested more than them. You know, the trials and tribulations that all the prophets had to face, you know. This is, inshallah, a sign that, you know, there is maybe khair in what it is you're doing. You know, when Allah is testing you, it's like Allah only wants what's best for you, you know. So, and Allah never gives you a trial that you can't overcome. Mm -hmm. But generally, the feedback you get from the people, what's, what's, it's what's positive. I mean, I, would ne I don't really receive anything negative, to be honest with you. And, and most people are very, you know, I guess because there's a lack of, you know, young role models and people doing this kind of thing, um, they're really kind of keen on, you know, thanking you and, and, and praising you in a, you know, in, a, in a respectful manner. They're very keen on letting you know that they appreciate the work. And I'll be honest, especially East African people, okay? <laughs> because I think there's a lack of us two doing this, that they're always looking for an opportunity to be like, you know, that's my brother, like, that's my dog, you know, like, that's, he's from my turf, you know? They start bragging about you and stuff like that. Um, so it's flattering, you know, it's, it's nice to, to see young Muslims you know, take a hold of something which is ours. Because in like my bio says, the voice of a generation. Honestly, I mean, I made that up. Like I, <laughs> I, 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 I wrote that in a bio one time as a joke and somehow it just fled. It started to fly everywhere. But you know, you really feel that way sometimes because there's a lot of people who don't have a voice. There's a lot of people who for many reasons can't speak up. And it's an obligation upon somebody who is in a position to use their voice to represent what is best for the community mm -hmm. and to advise people and to offer them sincere advice, you know, and, and, and following the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu you know, working and worrying about the people. The Prophet Sallallahu loved the people, you know. And to be a da'i, you have to care about the people because, unfortunately, you know, most people are sick. And as opposed to just, you know, 
just giving everybody towel. Now, what happens when you go into a doctor's office? Right? He, he, he diagnoses you. He says, what's your problem? What do you have? Well, I have this, this chest pain and this ache. And based on that, you're able to give them a medicine. You know, some people are coming to me saying, look, you know, I was listening to music my whole life, or I was somebody who was caught up in this, and I, I didn't feel beautiful about myself, and I, I didn't feel like I could pray. My family didn't accept me. So I start writing. Yeah, the, these things I keep in my mind. And I don't force my poetry, but I keep these themes in the back of my head. Is that what you used to basically I write I try to, yeah. Like, I mean, I have one poem in particular that I'm thinking of. It's called Beautiful. And it's, you know, I, I was, it was, it stemmed from a conversation I had with a family member of mine who, you know, when I asked her, why don't you wear hijab, which can be a very awkward conversation if anybody's ever done it, you know, he asked the sister, why don't you wear hijab? Don't wear hijab. And, 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 you know, <laughs> you know I mean? yeah, and, and, and she just said, you know, because I don't feel as though people will think that I'm beautiful. And I just said, subhanAllah. If only you knew what beauty was. Mm. You know, that just completely just set this wheels in motion in my mind that I really need to start letting sisters know how beautiful they are. So, sorry to cut you there, Akhi. We're going for a short break, inshallah ta'ala. After the break, the phone lines are going to be open. You can phone up, you can speak to Buna, you can speak to Faisal. Also, we're going to hear some poems from Buna, Buna Muhammad, also <laughs> Faisal Saleh, inshallah ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back to our show, The Two Pass. And the topic today is the power of words. If any callers out there would like to call up, speak to Buna Muhammad or Faisal Saleh, the number's going to come up, inshallah ta'ala. Call up, send salams. If there's any questions, just feel free to call up and speak to the brothers, inshallah. The next question I'd like to ask the brothers, starting with Faisal, is mm. now we've seen that it's a trend that a lot of Muslims, they want to get into the poetry mm. scene. It's like the new thing. It's like the new fashion right now. What advice have you got to brothers who are trying to come up into this scene? I think first and foremost, I'd say, with all the effort that brothers are directing towards being a poet, why aren't they just tilt it to the other side and direct it towards being a hafiz al Quran, directing it to knowing, knowing more about the deen al Islam? Because that's all you should really have your focuses on. Me, I'm not even lying to you. Wallahi, I don't put a lot of effort into this. I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna lie and say I do. I break my back. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie, but. Yeah, I try to learn Arabic first and foremost. That's what I spend most of my weekdays doing. I'm trying to learn the Quran as I go along because I hardly know anything. And that's something that upsets me. This, what I do, is something small that I do on the side. Alhamdulillah, that Allah's rewarded me with. That Allah's blessed me with a little talent that I'm trying to use. But of all these people that are trying their hardest to be poets, I don't know how much help that's going to be to us on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. I think the Quran would be much more of a help. So I'd advise them to learn that first and foremost. How about you, Bruno? Uh Well, I, I'd like to read here what the brother said. I think that, you know, if you look at the example of the Prophet Sallallahu you know, the Sahabas had tasks and goals, like in the leadership style was that, you know, certain people did certain things, right? Certain people like Khalid bin Walid were more known for his battlefield work. People like, you know, Abdullah bin Abbas was, you know, a scholar and was somebody that you would go to with regards to certain issues with the Quran and such. So I think it's important for the Ummah to be similar, right? Some, we need doctors, we need lawyers, we mm. need, you know, artists, we need poets, we need this, we need that, but not everybody should be doing one thing. You know, not everybody has to be doing this thing. And everybody has a gift, you know, everybody has a talent. It's really a matter of finding what it is that you're good at and you like to do and utilizing it. So there's some brothers and sisters out there who are, mashallah, you know, and they get in front of a computer and they can do some amazing graphic design. You know how badly we need that kind of stuff? You know, if you look at all the masajid and the conferences and all the graphic design, and sometimes the Islamic stuff we have just looks ghetto. You know? <laughs> we need people to use their talents and do something good, Spot right? On. In regards to a lot of these brothers and sisters right now who want to do poetry, like, you know what? I'm not going to bash it. I, I, I personally, you know, I think there is a little too much. I think there's a little too much desire to get out there. And, you know, brothers ask me some weird questions. You know, they ask me, like, how can I get known? <laughs> and I'm just like, that's really your goal? Like, that's your task? I mean, <coughs> if it's good and, and, and there's barakah in it, you know, it will hopefully, inshallah, it will be something that, you know, perpetuates people's attention on their own. You know, you don't necessarily need to force it. But at the same time, there is a lot of advice I would give. And the first, and what I talked about earlier, is always your intention. Always purify your intentions. There's so much that can go wrong, you know, if you do not have the correct intention. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to do something which will end up actually being, you know, a burden for you in Yom Al-Qiyamah. How stupid will you feel when you stand before Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala and Allah will ask you, you know, what did you do with this blessing? What did you do with this talent? You say, I tried to get girls, you know. Mm -hmm. You'll feel like a real dork at that day, you know. So it's important to, you know, First and foremost, purify your intentions. And there is a lot more advice I can give, you know, because there's technical things too. Like, I'll be honest with you, I feel as though I'm an okay writer, but I'm, I more pride myself on my performance. There's a certain way of presenting yourself and your work. 
And a lot of young Muslims, they don't really get that. You know, oh. For them, it's just a matter of sitting in front of writing. And then, you know, if they were ever presented, it's very boring stuff. One of the things that I learned coming up in the slam poetry scene is that, you know, it's really like 75% presentation, 25% content. And, you know, people who are horrible writers but amazing performers will always be better in front of a crowd than people who are, you know, vice versa, right? If you're an amazing writer but you can't perform, it's not going to get you far. Yeah. So that's one piece of advice I could offer, you know. And, and if you actually analyze, there's so much you can draw from the example of the Prophet ﷺ, including, you know, the Prophet ﷺ was very concise in his words and his thoughts. You know, some of the companions said they could almost count the number of words that he would use on their hands. If poets and, and presenters and people took that to heart, they would realize that within every single word there is power. And every single word has to be picked and used for a correct and right reason. You know, you would do something in, in slam poetry which is, you know, you would cut out the fat. Because you only have a time, <coughs> you have a three minute time limit, you would go through your work and trim it down. And this line doesn't need to be there and that line doesn't be there. Some poets now, sometimes they'll go on for about, they have a poem for 15 minutes. <coughs> SubhanAllah. Mm -hmm. hey, the poem, uh, I have to go places, you know, I can't be here all day <laughs> listening to you. You know what I'm saying? So, like, if you really look at that and, you, you know, you, you examine the sunnah of the Prophet and the Salah, way in Salah. which he communicated, Salah. the way in which he was, you know, the best of examples in every regard, yeah. um, there's more you can learn. And I, for anybody that's interested I'm actually I, I've you know utilized my talents and my experience to create a course it's a you know full day seminar devoted to examining effective communication techniques in line with the Quran and the Sunnah so like some of those uh, you know points I mentioned earlier the course is called connect the dots and uh, yeah right, talk about it. Uh, we've got our first caller inshallah ta'ala assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh yes yeah, I just want to say, um, well, first of all, I absolutely love um, Beautiful, and um, for the love, I was listening to it today, and um, a friend of mine who is a non-Muslim, um, we absolutely can't wait for Connect the Dots, so thank you very much mm -hmm. for, for your contribution to Islam. So that's the first thing. And um, secondly, I'd just like to um, ask both of the brothers, um, Faisal also, um, who inspired you before you actually came to um, Islam in, t in musical terms? Because um, I myself, I'm a writer, and people like Jill Scott and Erica Badu mm -hmm. um, had, a, had a, a big influence in the way in which I write and even in the way in which I sing. So that's my question posed to you guys today. Jazakallah. Mm -hmm. right, we're going to take the next call, inshallah ta'ala. We'll answer the question afterwards. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, I want to ask a question to Bona. Yes, hi. Free, um, your poetry really inspires me because you use a lot of enthusiasm, and I just wanted to know, like, what techniques do you use? Because um, it's like really inspires you, and like when you are listening to your poems, like you ask questions. Yeah, yesterday I was at the Young Planners event, and then you performed your poem signs and you said um even the devil believes in allah so what does that make you and it really makes you think like, like you know it makes you think so i was thinking what kind of techniques do you use in your poetry to get that effect on people mm. uh, inshallah ta'ala we've got one more caller make sure you hold that thought there, inshallah ta'ala assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa alaikum assalam wa barakatuh have you got a question sister um yeah um, I've got a question for um, Bona Mohammed. Yes, Shala. Um. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu um. <laughs> alaikum. Turn down the TV volume, Shala. Okay, thanks for the right. question. Hey. <laughs> no, no problem, Shala. Right, let's deal with the questions. First and foremost, the first sister said that. Regarding both of you, like what, who inspired you mm. in regards to your poetry, etc. Are you sorry? Um, basically, I have kind of three. Um, what first happened was I went to an event. Actually, this guy was one of them, mashallah. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and then um, I had the next person. Um, I went to an event at uh, my local masjid, and brothers were in the in there performing. And as subhanallah. I was thinking they're doing something with the talent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them with. Why don't I try and do something as well? Because I really wanted to get up there. I'm not going to deny it. I really wanted to try and utilize what I had to cause an impact as well. Alhamdulillah. And um, the last one is the artist that I actually did look into. I'm not going to deny it. Was, um, the first one was Abdullah Ro, And second was No Beats Necessary. Because just their name in general did it for me. Because me, I, was, I love my music. I love beatboxing. I even tried to put that into my nasheeds at first. But what they did was so clear and simple. And... 
they use no instruments whatsoever. I thought I was going to try and go along that path, inshallah, Tyler. How about you, Bruno? Uh, you know, it's funny because I, I'm a real hip-hop head, like, from when I was a youth, you know, like, I, I actually I was very in love and fascinated with the hip-hop culture, and, and when I was very young, the first tape I ever bought in my life was a Tupac Shakur album, yeah. okay? <laughs> and, you know, obviously, I'm not promoting music, I'm telling you, I don't listen to music, you know, I, I definitely, this, you know, I, I definitely am not proud of that, but in terms of, she asked about influences, in terms of creative influences, there's nobody who influenced me more than, you know, Tupac Shakur and his lyricism and the fact that, although it must, most of what he was talking about was nonsense, he had a lot of passion about what he talked about and he was very personal and he let you into his soul. And he was a storyteller. I mean, before mm -hmm. anything, like, you gotta really give the dude credit. Like, he was a poet, actually, before anything. And so, I really kind of, you know, modeled myself after him in that regards. And, you know, alhamdulillah, I guess, you, you know, he was effective in his communication and he wasn't really doing it for the right reasons. But I try and take that methodology and use it for the khair. So, inshallah, it, you know, it comes out good. The next question the sister was asking basically about one of your poems. She said that you mentioned something about the devil, etc. Could you? Yeah, she was asking about, down? you know, the different techniques and, subhanallah, like, the sister before actually mentioned that I will be teaching a class in Birmingham called Connect the Dots, which is literally a full day devoted to, you know, examining these different techniques because she's right, you know, rhetorical questions is a form of gaining people's attention. And there's just so many little things that honestly I can't even sum up in this like, you know, this hour that we have. Um, a few examples include, you know, and the major one for me has always been body language because actually a big portion of what you say is not what you say, it's how you say it. And unless you, you know, unless your body language contradicts what you say, generally speaking, most people will take this language before your words. Subhanallah. So it's not always, you know, a matter of the, the, the vices I use. If somebody actually analyzed my work on paper, it's very simple. It doesn't actually look good. You know, I would never print my stuff in a book because it's not really about the words. It's more about how I say it and how I get it across. So it goes hand in hand. It's it not goes, just about the yeah, writing, Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot about presentation. A lot of it is about performance. And... I'm glad she, you know, mentioned that the, you know, the interest in the course. And I'm really happy that I'm bringing it to Birmingham this year. Uh, inshallah, next time I come, I'd like to bring it to the other cities as well. But it's a course like never before. I mean, I've never seen something like this because there is a lot of, you know, basic fundamental techniques to presenting and communicating that people just don't know. And some of it is based in Islam, others is just public speaking, right? If, you know, anyone's ever had to make a presentation for school or has ever had to, you know, present a show like this, like, mm -hmm. there's certain things you can do to improve your, 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 you know, your success rate at it. And that's more what I focus on, as well as, you know, the stuff that has to do with, you know, what to say, what not to say, how to say it. Like, this is all technical. Uh, but uh, to show my sum up her question and her answer, um, you have to join the course. You have to really be at the course this Tuesday, the 21st, inshallah, in Birmingham at the Aston University, inshallah. 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 Well, what, what was your motive to be creating these short courses, explaining all this to the people? For questions like that, I mean, people would literally, you know, I would get a lot of emails, people asking me, you know, I'm a young writer and I have this thing and, I, you know, what do we think about this? Listen to my, people would always send me, and they still do, and I, I mean, I read them. I, I try my best to read them. I'm not going to lie. I don't read word for word every <laughs> single thing, right? But somebody will send me a piece and they'll be like, what do you think? And before me giving them an answer, it's like, look, it's not what I think at the end of the day. Because it's very subjective. It's an art form, you know. I would, I, that's why I, found, I fell in love with English at a young age. Because I would give my paper to this teacher, she would give me an F. I'll give it to this one, she would give me a B. And I'd be like, hey, everyone's, <laughs> everyone's okay. Right? It's just, I mean, it's, it's very subjective in that respect. It's an art form. It's a craft. So it's not a matter of what I think is right or wrong. Ultimately, if your intention is to, you know, please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if that is, you know, in check, then it doesn't really matter, you know, what your words look like on paper, or if people even listen. Because we talk about the example of Nuh alayhi salam, where, you know, he was calling, 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 nobody was listening, but he was success. So if you have the same attitude, if you're, you know, trying your best to, you know, do something for good, like you want this to be, maybe you want to wake up non-Muslims. You know, I do some stuff that is very provocative because I want non-Muslims, and I, this is this just me where, you know, how many non-Muslims watch our YouTube videos, mm. right? Like, I just, I never imagined that. I never go online and watch, hey, Christian debates. I never go on and watch that kind of stuff. Mm. But the amount of views and comments I have on my YouTube channel from non-Muslims debating, being like, oh, this can't be true because this, this, and this. You're making them think regardless. <laughs> you know, and a lot of people, they, when they come into Islam, they say, look, I was one of those people. I used to debate, and just for the sake of debating, I knew it was right, I just wanted you to convince me. So I keep that in the back of my mind. You know, these people, it's just a matter of time. You know, inshallah, Allah hopefully will guide them, and it's not necessarily my job to, you know, fix their beliefs or change. Inshallah. It's just a job to call. That's it. 
Right. I give you the message, you decide how you want to take it. That's you know, right. it's a very simple job when you put it that way. But again, to reiterate the point, there is, you know, a lot that you can learn from the course, inshallah. And I'm not here to plug the course like crazy, but you know, right. I, I will be trying to eventually tour this you know, this course around, and then hopefully, maybe down the line, I'll put it online for people to just, you know, watch at home in their own comfort. Inshallah. We've got another caller, inshallah ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Brother, it's just my question. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. You got a question, brother? Yeah. Uh, uh, my question is just regarding the the brothers. They're talking about uh, songs and uh, writers and uh, and and the people. The the other brother, the other sheikhs. They got different uh, uh, different ideas. You know what what they think about uh, music and all these things. And rather than rather than we going back to the sunnahs of the Sahaba, what they've done and what they achieved, rather than music and all these kind of things. I think. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, we got another caller, inshallah ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, I just want to give my salams. I really haven't got a question. But uh, and I would just like to say, you know, may Allah reward you brothers for your efforts. And wallahi, mashallah, for the work and the effort that you guys have put in. Jazakallah. Jazakallah. Yeah, no problem. Assalamu alaikum. Now, inshallah ta'ala, Buna, mm. you're known for your unique poetry, mashallah ta'barakallah. Are the viewers going to be able to hear something from you today, inshallah ta'ala? Well, I wanted to do something, but, you know, Faisal mentioned how badly he wanted to do something. <laughs> and because of that, I didn't want to take away his shine. So what, I, so what happened was... Um, I told him he could go first, yeah, yeah. and Did then there's know? time, maybe the other brother will call back and we'll have, <laughs> yeah. you know, more. How more. about this, Akhi? Uh, How about, um, seeing as I've got so much love and respect for you, uh, I'll go second, inshallah, and you can go first. Inshallah. The thing is, I mean, I, I want to present a piece for you all. Um, the only thing is I'm worried about, because I'm sitting down, and I mentioned before, a lot of this presentation, right? Mm. Um, and I don't really have a nice, pretty voice, but I know somebody who does. Inshallah. Huh? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> uh, you do something, inshallah, I'll do something afterwards. Inshallah, inshallah, I'm gonna hold you to your word. Okay, okay, inshallah. Uh, feel free, inshallah. Um, inshallah. All right, and this very, this, this little piece is just a bit about myself and what I went through and just my short stages. Because everybody thinks because you do a little bit of dawah, you assume that you're perfect. And this is what my piece is about. It goes like this. Um, Bismillah. Ya Allah, please help me. Ya Allah. Please guide me, Ya Allah, bestow your mercy upon me in this time of need. Amen. I'm not perfect, far from that. I find it hard to lower my gaze, struggle to pray my salat, a memorize the Quran. Haven't implemented the pillars of Islam So at night, so at night I wonder about my fate Sleepless nights, sleepless nights I wonder The silent whisperer, he speaks to my soul Beckons me to the dark turn at the crossroad Only me, myself and I, so I am all alone Just trying to find my path back home My path back home Ya Allah, please help me Ya Allah, please guide me Ya Allah, bestow your mercy upon us in this time of need. Amen. See, I don't hit the zubi or the shubs no more. Brothers, don't show love, don't call no more. These were once my boys, now they're going on wrong. This dunya's a prison for my soul. Feels so good, but I don't want to let go. But before you rise, 
you go on a fall. So, Ya Allah, please help me. Ya Allah, please guide me. Ya Allah, bestow your mercy upon us in this time of need. Mashallah, mashallah. Now it's your time. That was so now beautiful. Now we've got, we got a little back to back thing going no, on. Now, you know what's so amazing about that? It's mashallah, you know. A voice like that, you know, can really captivate people's hearts and souls. And you find that often, I'm being serious, right? Like, there's something about, you know, mm -hmm. that type of melody and that type of pitch that's very beautiful and you can't really do in poetry, you know? It's very, I think to compete against that would be wrong. All right, listen, wrong listen, this is what we're going to do. We're uh, going to take, take, take a caller, inshallah, ta'ala. Okay, then we're going to put the pressure we'll straight back on you. It's your turn. Don't try to run away from me, actually. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hello, assalamu Wa alaikum wa rahmatullah. Uh, all three of you are doing really gr uh, great job, and uh, especially Brother Buna. Uh, um, I want to uh, give him uh, a message that uh, one of our uh, poet in history uh, in uh, in Asia, uh, he was uh, like he was describing Quran's message and uh, a prophet Sunnah in his poetry, mm -hmm. and. Uh, he was the great, great poet, and he inspired not hundreds and not thousands, and, um, not millions, but billions of people around the world. Mashallah. And when he dreamed about uh, making a uh, separate country for a Muslim, for Muslim then uh, people said that uh, it's like a mad people, um, mad person dream, but uh, it's it dream come true. Mm -hmm. And he united millions of millions of Muslims uh, through his poetry. So he's doing great job, brother, and uh, uh, Allah uh, help you in, Allah in your Allah. work. And uh, Alhamdulillah, you are doing great job. And uh, we Muslim even feel shame that we we can't do that much uh, for, for the sake of Islam. Jazakallah khair. I just, you know, I mean, Jazakallah khair, sister, for a very beautiful comment. She said something at the end, uh, which, you know, I mean, some people feel that way. She said, you know, uh, she, people say, feel ashamed like they can't do something. And again, I want to let the people know out there, you can do something, you know. Because me, I'm a very small portion of, of you know, anything, right? In order for me to, in fact, do a show, right? Like, I just did an event uh, the other day when I was in London. And, you know, somebody had to book the show, somebody had to book the venue, somebody had to advertise, somebody had to market, somebody right, had to create right, the, right, the, right, the uh, flyer, right. somebody had to do this, somebody do that. And then they just called me and then I got on stage for five minutes. But there was 160 million things going on before I got there. You know? So don't believe as though, you know, if you're not the da'i, you can't do anything. You can support it for sure. There's so many opportunities for da'wah. Brothers and sisters, do not feel restricted to being the person in front of the microphone. Mm -hmm. There's a hundred million opportunities for you to do. And part of it is, you know, when I was first started out doing my thing, there weren't really any, I didn't really know anybody else doing it, you know. And that didn't stop me. I said, if nobody's doing it, then I'll do it. Who cares? You know, don't necessarily use, you know, the restrictive, you know, views of, of the da'wah, right? I mean, some people think to be a da'i is to stand on the street corner and hand out pamphlets. Mm -hmm. We need that. Mm -hmm. People have to do that. But that's not for everybody. Everyone, everyone's basically got a role to play. Everybody's got a role to play, you know, because unfortunately, someone like me, I mean, I, I don't really know math. I can't really do, you know, if you bring me a sick child, I'll just tell them to go home, you know. Like, yeah. But you need somebody for that kind of stuff, you know? know. All right, we've got about five minutes left of the show. Boom. Mm. I need to put the heat on you right now. So <laughs> you need to wrap something up for us, inshallah, to Allah, before the show ends. I can't, I can't let you get away with uh, that. Okay, inshallah. I'll actually, I'll do a snippet from one of my pieces, okay, inshallah. because unfortunately, I think the piece is a little bit too long to do. Um, but I'll do a little piece and then I'll just talk about it. Sure. Um, the piece actually doesn't have a title, but hopefully maybe by end of this I'll come up with a name. <laughs> so, inshallah. Um, what if I told you there were soldiers outside who despised you and I, ready to take us dead or alive with guns pointed at your pride? And you had the option to just lie and denounce what you hold inside. Would you go run and hide or get ready to die? You see, the problem with you and I is we would say anything to stay alive, multiplied by the drive that we have to survive. Most would rather compromise than to be chastised, so we don't even try. But I dare to ask why. 
Homeland Security is only trying to secure me in these tiny little rooms where I could barely breathe. Maybe it's the way I'm dressed in the land of the free. No chemise, I should have just wore jeans and a tee. And I know it's hard to believe, but I ain't a refugee. Actually, I was born in a hospital right down the street. So tell me what's the beef, is it the beard or attire? Or is it my last name? You could just call me Michael. Are you comfortable? Am I moderate enough for your liking? I don't want any trouble, I'll be good man. I promise I'm honest, only liars need to preach to a choir. Cause holding on to this dean is like holding on to fire with a smile. Ain't sure if it's still worth your while. Hey, you said you wanna believe, then you will be put on trial. Test but blessed are those who remain steadfast and pray Cause what are we but slaves just looking for a raise Bless We've got three minutes left Give us a little breakdown of that poem, inshallah. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I wrote that poem actually Out of frustration of not being allowed to travel back into the U.S. Subhanallah You know, this is a, a problem that actually you wouldn't you wouldn't know, but there's a lot of very prominent shiuk and da'i in the in the country and in the world who can't travel freely because of what they're trying to do. Spot you on. know, I actually recently had a, an issue at the border, the U.S. border specifically, where they're not allowing me back in because you know not for anything really bad, but because I travel frequently for the purposes of work and stuff like that. And I don't think they're really too comfortable with what it is I'm doing to begin with, and they basically told me, look, don't come back unless you have a work permit. And to obtain a work permit in the U.S. is like, pfft, you might as well just, you know, try to fly to Mars because it's just as difficult, right? And it's, it's really unfortunate that because of that, I've been, you know, just restricted in my travel. But Qadrullah ma sha'fa'ar, like if I'm not supposed to go, I'm not supposed to go. No, nah, but, yeah. but you're in Canada. It's so close to it, the That's US, what the funny so part is. Yeah, like, I mean, a flight from Toronto to New York is probably like 20 minutes, half an hour, maybe an hour tops. And for some reason, I'm a threat. And part of why I said that in the poem is because they look at me and they tell, you know, where are you from? Where were you born? I said, buddy, I was born down the road from here. How you mean? Like, I'm, I'm a Canadian, you know? And they start looking at you and talking to you funny, like, you know, like you're a suspect and you're this threat. And I mentioned in the piece, I said, you know, would you prefer if my last name was, you know, Michael or Bob or Jim or whatever, and if I didn't have a beard and if I didn't have a thobe and if I would shaved, you know, this and that. And, I, you know, I'm questioning that, but I know a lot of Muslims are quick to, you know, feel as though they have to cave in in order to survive. You hear that a lot. A lot of brothers, they say, you know, I'm going to shave my beard because i got to get a job. Automatically co start compromising their deen. Automatically. The first thing to go is your deen. And, you know, I didn't get to finish the rest of the piece. Inshallah, it'll be up a uh, road tie to Islam, inshallah. Inshallah, uh, inshallah. But the idea is that, you know, don't be, as don't be ashamed of your Islam, you know. Do not be ashamed of your Islam. And remember the Prophet said, this Allah religion Allah began Allah. as something strange, it will Allah return Allah. to something strange. Allah. And who is stranger than us today? These three Allah. brothers wearing these long dresses in this studio. People Allah. look at me like I'm a freak on the streets, you know? Allah. Some guy with these big holes in his nose and his spiked ears <laughs> looking at me, what's wrong? I'm like, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with you, bro? You know what I'm saying? Men, I'm dressing up like girls and all of a sudden I'm the one who's all strange? Man, I mean, this is the reality of what we're living in, you know? So I always advise the young people and especially the youth because I think we have a unique opportunity in the West. You know, we are the future of this ummah. Right, I'm going to cut you there. Sorry, Aki. We're coming to the end of the show, inshallah ta'ala. First and foremost, I'd like to say Jazakallah Khairan for well, coming yeah. on our show, spending your time and presenting our show for us, inshallah ta'ala, because you helped me <laughs> during the whole show. Amen. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward both of you. Amen, amen. Inshallah ta'ala, check us out next week, inshallah ta'ala. Jazakallah Khairan, Abu Bakr Islam, the two path rolls out to Islam. Assalamu alaikum.